Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to work on the 6070 uh, wow. ambulance. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is install the 1234 uh, piston down in the case. Not the wave plate. Piston, spring, snap ring, and if things are dirty, that's fine. I'm actually going to put this together for you guys and then it's all getting tore back apart for uh, parts for another trans. So, that being said, if there's dirt, don't freak out. Alright, we're going to rock some gold trans gel. Lube both sides of the seal. Nah, yeah, screw it. Excuse my finger. And technically there's a special tool to put this in, but I never use it. You just gotta be somewhat gentle. Put it in. And work it around like such. Then you take the spring, put it on there. And then this is kind of fun. Once you get the snap ring started down in there, take a screwdriver and we'll just kind of just start working it around. And then go back around again, make sure it's fully seated. All right, now for the one, two, three, four clutch plates and the low reverse clutch. You start with your wave plate, it's wavy. This tab goes over towards the opening that's at the bottom of the trans. And then after your wave plate, you do one steel. And if you're building this, to actually use soaker your clutches. Like that, and then... This one, I can never remember which way it goes. I literally just work them around until I get it lined up. You shouldn't have to force it. There we go, now it just drops in and make sure it make sure it's got the ratcheting effect. And take your snap ring for that. It's the one that has the little kick out. Slide it down like so, make sure it's fully seated, which it is. All right, now for your low reverse, take your apply plate. It has a little shelf, the shelf goes down. Like so, then we'll do the friction. Get the wavy out of the way. the friction another steel another friction then your last steel is going to go in and then there's an, a backing plate and you can see the uh, backing plate is thicker than a normal steel so I'll put the normal steel in like so Friction, and then the backing plate, and then your wavy plate. 
and that's your low reverse clutch. All right, now we're gonna install the guts. All your different planetaries. This assembly here, piece by piece. Before everybody says anything, yes, I'm reading off a piece of paper because I wanna make sure I get all the names right. Uh, input shaft thrust bearing. And you can see it has this little raised area that faces down into the final drive, like so. Then you have your output carrier transfer drive gear hub assembly. You gotta line up with the splines on the final drive, like so. Hopefully you guys can see. Okay, you guys can still see. And then number three is gonna be front differential transfer drive gear input hub bearing assembly. Like that. Goes down, followed by output sun gear and hold it by this, and then this you're gonna line up with your low reverse clutches. Just wiggle it, one trail all the way down. We'll spin like so. Output carrier assembly, is what this one is called. Has five planets in it. And this one's kind of, we just hold it kind of like this. Drop it on in there. So it splines like so. Output carrier thrust bearing. Now there's two bearings here. The one that has the um, little ears, ears go down like so. And then on the bigger gear, they go down as well, like so. Take your, oh, this one's gonna be input with output interior, output internal gear carrier assembly. Kind of grab it on the outside like this. Like that. Take sun gear. Drop it in like so. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of these? Input sun gear thrust bearing. You can see the slight raised edges here that goes down into the sun gear input carrier thrust bearing goes down the raised area the raised lip goes down into the planet like so the reaction carrier like so put it on there Once it's in there, you'll see it sits down about to the about flush with the bottom of the chamfer. All right, now we're onto the two six clutch plates. You have your backing plate, super thick. Goes in with your tab facing the bottom, like every other one. Oh, and then we get a friction, followed by a steel. Friction, steel, friction, steel, and then a wavy plate. You see, it's got the waves. Then we have our input sun gear slash two six shell, and we're gonna just work it down. Like that, and then you take your uh, thrust bearing, has the raised edges, they go down into the sun gear, like so. All right, now we're gonna assemble the uh, three five reverse and the four five six clutch hub, um, input shaft, etc. Um, the only difference is I'm not gonna pull the pistons. Um, there's tools I don't have here that I need to do it. Um, your four five six piston, it's gonna look like this. You have a seal that rides there there there's one that rides on the shaft itself but we're going to leave that alone there's a spring set underneath of it a fluid dam um i'll put the picture from the assembly on and it shows all the components um 
I'll put that up now so you guys can see it. Um, then the 456, you have your piston. There's a spring underneath of it that lets it apply. And then you have your uh, your input speed sensor reluctor wheel. So we're going to put this hub down in here. There's a bearing. It's already stuck. It has a raised lip. The raised lip goes into the hub like so. It'll drop down on there. And then here's your order. Doo -doo -doo. Grab the new frictions. So you get steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. And apply plate. Almost forgot, don't forget your snap ring. Make sure it's fully seated. Here's your 456. And then, if you're doing it the other way, you put your snap ring in, you can build your clutches, but this way we're going to do it reverse. So you have your wavy, and when everybody talks about 3 5 wave plate breaking, that's the wave plate. And that. Ha! Two-way plates. My bad. Are we recording this? Yeah, okay. Wavy. Followed by steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Steel. Friction. Apply plate. And this can be a little tricky, but it's good if you do it without stabbing yourself at the end of the snap. Right now. There's my screwdriver. Take a little screwdriver, makes it a little bit easier. Like so. And then you'll be able to push the piston down some. So then you just walk around. Just like so. And now that's in. And then I'll show you how to air check this. And then we'll air check the uh, one, two, three, four in the case. All right. If we're recording, should be recording. I really hope we're recording. Yep. All right. All right, this is your front cover. Now, to do these seals and the stuff in here, you need special tools to press this down. It's damn near impossible without them. So, we're gonna show you how to air check. If everything air checks fine, don't tear it apart. Unless you have like super catastrophic, but at that point you're probably putting a transit in anyways. Um, Cause it'll tear this case up. You might put a new case, but anyways. So there's Teflon rings here that also you need a special tool to get them in and size them. So to test those and this, take your 3.5 housing, go ahead and put the uh, bearing on. The bearing goes like that. Now it's fully seated. Take a blowgun. We're going to start. This is a bleed port, so we're not going to worry about that one. Make sure it's fully seated. 3-5 reverse. Holds just fine. So I know all the seals in the 3-5 housing and the Teflon rings are good. This should be... Yeah, this is going to be for your... Uh, this is for your 2... Yeah, 2-6 clutches. And you have a little bit of bleed off. Perfectly fine. This one here... 
is your uh, 4, 5, 6 in the middle. Perfectly fine. And then finally you have your uh, low reverse. And you will have bleed down on this too. But that feels phenomenal. So, everything is good on the case half here, or on the case cover. Somebody's mowing. So we're gonna take this back out, bring the case back up here, and I'm gonna show you how to install this, along with your case cover and a gasket. One thing I forgot to mention, testing the, uh, the one, two, three, four on the bottom. There is a round hole in the middle here. If you guys can see that. You take your blowgun, put it all the way in there. Perfect. And you can actually see, let me move the camera. All right, there's the hole that you're putting the air in. And you can look in here and you can actually see the clutch is getting applied and holding. That's the biggest thing is you want them to hold. Don't know if you can see that, but perfect, perfect. Other than being dirty, I mean, I could technically probably put this together, put it in, it'd run fine. But I'm gonna get you back up. We're gonna put the uh, cover and gasket and stuff on. All right, bearing is already in the uh, sun gear there. Take the three five housing, then we flip it over. Slide it down on. Then you want to grab like this because you want it, you have to get these plates to line up and seat all the way into this uh, hub here. Bearing is still on there like that, so now we'll grab the gasket. Put the gasket on like so. There's a little hole here, and that is going to be where your uh, input speed sensor goes. Slide her through like that, just like that. Pull through, little by little. Just like so. Like that, you shouldn't have to hammer it down. You shouldn't have to put bolts in and pull it down. It should drop right on. Now, we'll start all the bolts. And we'll take the 10 mil. The torque spec on 106 inch pounds. I'm not worried about torque because it's going to come back apart anyways. All right, now we're on to the valve body. All right, you got your three valve body halves. You have two new spacer plates. You have your backing plate that has the gasket on your, eh, already on it. You have your between your two sides, you have one holes and a big notch and the other one that doesn't. You have your accumulators for your various gears. The one without any holes fits literally perfect on it. And you'll have two new uh, Christmas tree style retainers. One goes there. The other goes there. And now we're going to put the uh, check balls in here. Then you have one there, one there, and you can see where they're supposed to go. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Just gotta not be blind. Do, do, do. Blind. That one. I'm thinking there's one more. Emmanuel says there's nine. I don't ever remember there being nine. Nope, there's supposed to be a ninth one right there. Uh, let me look in the box and see if it's in there. Negative, short one check ball. There'd be another one that would go right there. Again, this all come apart, so it doesn't really matter for me. So now we'll take this. Get it to line up. There's alignment pins. Like that, we'll flip this assembly over. 
take your gasket there. All right, take this one here. You have a little alignment deal there and there. They line up with the corresponding ones in the valve body. Like so. Now hold it all together, we'll flip it over. And then this end in here, we'll put the bolt. 55 millimeters long, an M6. Like that, and that gets torqued to, pardon me, let's say, yeah, nine foot pounds. Uh, all right. Now, this gets sat on top, like so. All right, the three 35 mil bolts will go here. Then you have two that are 55 mil. Yeah, those are the ones that go here. And these are the ones. All right, and your 65 mil length ones go right along here, not at the edge, they go right there. All right. Again, nine foot pounds. And those are eights. All right, now your valve body is together. I'm gonna move this. That's your tech and that gets mounted in a minute. We're gonna move that, we're gonna slide this over, get you at a better angle and we'll get putting this into the transmission. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is take this little rubber seal here. That goes in for the one, two, three, four uh, piston, like so. Oh, before we put this in, make sure we put in your output speed sensor. It goes down here. Again, nine foot pounds. Like so. All right. All right, we got eight of the 65 mil M6 bolts. And actually we only need two of the 55 mil M6 bolts. Now we're gonna take this. We'll put our manual valve in. You want the spot because that rides on your uh, shift linkage. We're going to take it like so. Come on, Betsy. You want to make sure you get your uh, input speed sensor high enough that's not getting wedged in there like that. This can come up, push the manual valve up. It's kind of like putting together a puzzle. There we go, and there's a detent. There's two detents, and once it's in there like that, we'll take the 255s, go down here at the bottom. And then, it's gonna go around with these 65s. Again, nine foot pounds. Same with these. 
All right, now we'll go ahead and put in the, uh, that's why. That's why I was looking weird. This bolt here doesn't go there. That's why my bolt counts off. The last one has the uh, little park crawl, or not park crawl, but the, yeah. There we go, nine foot pounds. All right, now we're gonna put the Tecum on, or Trans Control Module Solenoid Pack, whatever you guys wanna call it. You have three bolts that measure an 80 millimeter with a 10 millimeter head. They go in these locations here. You have a uh, 55 mil bolt that goes there. And I have this sheet here that has what bolts are what. Um, these four bolts here are 80 millimeters in length. You have a 42 mil that goes here. And these two are 65 mil in length that go here and here. So usually I do this minus these two. And I'll show you why in a minute. Take this, like so. Get a couple of these started. Like that. Again, nine foot pounds. Just like about everything else on this. All right, and then finally, we have this little spring deal holds the TCM down to keep for the cooling. Slides into the notch and the space plate up top, and then you just kind of have to hold it. Just like that. And then you take your range switch wiring. It actually tucks behind this. I actually took behind this strap, comes over, plugs in down there. All right, this one was for the output speed sensor. You loop it up over that 8 mil bolt. There's a little holder right there on the Tecum for it, like so. Then this one gets routed underneath. Kind of gets hidden out of the way. Like so. And then finally, we have the cover. All right, make sure you put a new seal in the cover. And then it literally just slides over like so. You have two bolts that look like this. One of them goes up here. This is where your uh, transcore lines are secured to. Then your other one is going to go third hole up from the bottom. That holds the wiring harness stuff out of the way. But I'm apparently missing some bolts. Again, not worry about it. All right, there's the cover. We'll go ahead and put the dipstick in. Like so. All right guys, should I have a torque converter? Obviously you go here, uh, you have your three indents like normal. Yeah. Um, should I have that? She is put together. Um, again, like I said, I'm using this transmission. I'm gonna use some parts out of it for uh, a couple other ones. It's been a while since I've messed with these and now they're coming, I got a wave of them again. So I gotta refresh myself. Been doing a lot of the uh, six speeds in the rear wheel drive in the trucks um, and eight speeds. So, but if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer uh, your questions. Um, other than that, um, there's part two guys. You guys have kind of been hounding me about it. So here it is. I'm gonna get this thing off the bench, get the bench cleaned up. Um, Tech will be here tomorrow for the other six speed. Get that thing done. Um, yeah, that is it. So if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell, and we will guys, we will see you guys in the next one.